Welcome to LDSBookReviews.com. My name is Ryan Daly, and today we are doing Joseph Smith's Seer Stones. This is by McKay and Frederick, and it is published by the Religious Studies Center at BYU, and golly gee, am I thankful for it. This is probably the best book to come out of the Religious Studies Center in a long time, a long time, and it's the most relevant book as well. I could hug these guys. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. I'm going to give it a loose four stars, and I'll explain why. First and foremost, the dialogue is clear and transparent. It discusses the seer stones that Joseph Smith used to translate the Book of Mormon, as well as the potential seer stones that he used the rest of his life. It creates a fantastic narrative. However, the four stars comes in the introduction. I think every member of the church should read the introduction to fully understand the concept of understanding knowledge and gaining knowledge line upon line, as well as through cultural filters. I, I could have just torn that section out and handed it to every member of the church and said, please read this when it comes to understanding the historical context of the church. Or when we learn more information, it doesn't shatter our framework and totally disregard everything that we know to be true because we learn more. One of my favorite elements actually addresses the seer stones and the perception that they've been hidden, wherein they go into a number of counts in very common books, even Mormon doctrine that's virtually on every bookshelf, and says that seer stones have been addressed in the past numerous times in a number of well published, well-distributed books, but in order to know it, you actually have to read it. I loved it. I loved it. I could I could have hugged them. Could have hugged them if I see them. I'd love to meet them. Hugs coming your way, buddy, because that is the key. Most of the discussions in the church that bring up challenges, they've not been new discussions. These are discussions that happen over and over and over and over again, all the way since 1830. They've been resolved, they've been resolved, they've been discussed, they've been discussed, and virtually nothing is hidden in the church. Sometimes narratives changes and adjust slightly, but everything's been there. And the idea that just because I haven't taken the diligence to find it, research it, study it out for myself, it's been hidden from me? No. We have some accountability in this process, and that is exactly, I loved it. However, I give it a loose four stars, because as much as I think every member of the church should read it, it actually is a little schizophrenic in who the message, message goes to. The introduction is very much a message to the entire general membership of the church, and throughout it, it has that narrative, speaking of us collectively, but from the very first chapter, second chapter, it jumps into very uh, assumptive concepts of academia. The narrative changes in a concept that it becomes much more academic rather than, I would say, faithful. They quote, they assume, and they build upon principles that sometimes are even elusive to say they make inferences that might not be necessarily faith-promoting or even sources or sightings that not necessarily faith-promoting in an effort to be farms-ish, right? Academic-ish. And yet the rest of the narrative, the rest of the story, I would say, is focused more on the general membership of the church. So it's almost as if the audience shifts throughout the book. And then there are times when they build up to at least an assumption or what seems to me a very obvious connection, and they just loosely connect it at best. So there are times when I wish they would just say, wow, it's apparent that the, it's at least assumed that the Brownstone's purpose was translating the Book of Mormon. I think they allude to it, but they never actually come out and say it. They never help to create, craft a narrative that makes sense. They just present it. I get it. I understand why. That's fine. Academics, go through it. Just say the facts and then let the reader make some judgments on his own. But man, it got so close to at least being able to present a possible narrative in that light. And I think it would have been well received and actually just would have wrapped the book up just perfectly to make it a solid four stars that everyone should read. Because there are times when if you're not really into making the connections on your own, you could get lost and you actually could have had more questions arise. 
um, than not. So I love it. I think it sets a great precedent in the church for the way we should address historical information. I think I embrace the clarity that it has in it as well as the build-up to potentially creating a good narrative. Um, but it misses the mark in making it a solid four stars. But I, if you're interested in the topic, read it. If you're not, don't. But it is the best book on the topic of the Seer Stones that has come out. So please just punch with it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the hard work you put into it. And this is LDSBookReviews.com. And if you'd like more, go ahead and check out the blog, LDSBookReviews.com, or follow this video blog on YouTube. Thanks, guys.